certainty. Is it possible? The critique of Wittgenstein's epistemic views on certainty. By Jeremy Norris. Holy Apostles College and Seminary. Logic and Epistemology. PHS 611. Instructor, Dr. Philippe Yates. Contents. What is certainty? Wittgenstein on certainty. Absolute certitude. Stretch out your arm and look at your hand. Are you certain that this is a hand? G. E. Moore asserts in his paper, Proof of an External World, that this is indeed a hand, referring to his own. For more, this assertion starts a line of argumentation which strikes a final blow to the skeptic and idealist because its certainty is indisputable and its reality the same. If I hold out my hand and look at it, this assuredly proves that here is a hand. This seems simple and common sense enough to be above doubt, but can we be sure? Can we have certainty? The idea of certainty in Moore's essay sparked Wittgenstein's consideration of the subject. Wittgenstein's thoughts on the matter are complex. I contend we can indeed have epistemic certainty and Wittgenstein's thought provides a new understanding of how this is possible. However, left alone, his ideas about certainty require supplementation as they fall short of providing a full picture. What is certainty? To make a proper start, we must first consider what certainty is, whether there is more than one type, and what it is based on. Certitude may be defined as warranted assent, an assent of thought warranted by adequate evidence. In broad terms, there are three basic types of certitude, physical, moral, and metaphysical or epistemic certainty. All three ground themselves on particular evidence proper to their context. Physical certitude applies to Ascent based upon the evidence of the habitual behavior of physical bodies often formulated into the so-called laws of nature. If I toss a rock up in the air, I know it will fall back down. Given the way the law of gravity works, I can be certain of this. Moral certitude refers to actions done by a moral agent, a rational agent. Kenneth Gallagher gives the example of a child trusting his mother not to poison his oatmeal. This is moral certitude. The child has warranted assent based upon his mother's previous actions that she will not harm him. Metaphysical or epistemic certainty has an absolute character. It is objectively true, which is to say its opposite is strictly unthinkable. Wittgenstein on certainty. We will be considering epistemic certainty. Wittgenstein's consideration of the subject cannot be explained without first examining his concept of the language game. The language game refers to the manner or activity in which words are used. The word language game is used here to emphasize the fact that the speaking of a language is part of an activity or of a form of life. The language games we use form the background of our everyday lives. They are the setting upon which all our actions take place. This complex web of games pervades the whole human family. Now what do language games have to do with certainty? In order for communication to work properly, those involved must be using the same language game. Furthermore, according to Wittgenstein, certainty is a concept bound up in the language game in which it is being applied to. The truth of my statements is the test of my understanding of these statements. What counts as an adequate test of a statement belongs to logic. It belongs to the description of the language game.
We know with the same certainty with which we believe any mathematical proposition how the letters A and B are pronounced, what the color of human blood is called, that other human beings have blood and call it blood. That is to say, the questions that we raise and our doubts depend on the fact that some propositions are exempt from doubt are as it were like hinges on which those turn. That is to say, it belongs to the logic of our scientific investigations that certain things are indeed not doubted. But it isn't that the situation is like this. We just can't investigate everything. And for that reason, we are forced to rest content with assumption. If I want the door to turn, the hinges must stay put. Certainty can be expressed with the phrase, I know. When using this phrase, it is presumed that one is certain about the proposition being articulated, that the statement conforms with reality. As Wittgenstein puts it, I know is supposed to express a relation, not between me in the sense of a proposition like I believe, but between me and a fact. But what is the relation between the proposition and the fact? In other words, what provides the evidence or epistemic justification upon which the certainty of an objective fact is supposed to rest? Wittgenstein uses two particular illustrations to make plain what scaffolding certainty is upheld by. We will start with the most fundamental. At the bottom of certainty lies particular propositions Wittgenstein refers to as hinge propositions. These propositions are what other propositions with lesser degrees of certainty stand on, as it were. That is to say, the questions that we raise and the doubts depend on the fact that some propositions are exempt from doubt and are, as it were, like hinges on which those turn. Therefore, while some propositions can be doubted, there must be some propositions which are exempt from doubt. For a door to work, its hinges must stay in place. Furthermore, resting upon the hinge propositions are a whole nest of other propositions with varying degrees of certainty. When we first begin to believe anything, what we believe is not a single proposition. It is a whole system of propositions. Light dawns gradually over the whole. It is not single axioms that strike me as obvious. It is a system in which consequences and premises give one another mutual support. Bit by bit, there forms a system of what is believed, and in that system, some things stand unshakably fast, and some are more or less liable to shift. What stands fast does so not because it is intrinsically obvious or convincing, it is rather held fast by what lies around it. I do not explicitly learn the propositions that stand fast for me. I can discover them subsequently like the axis around which a body rotates. This axis is not fixed in the sense that anything holds it fast, but the movement around it determines its immobility. What I hold fast to is not one proposition, but a nest of propositions. Does anyone ever test whether this table remains in existence when no one is paying attention to it? Whenever we test anything, we are already presupposing something that is not tested. Now, am I to say that the experiment which perhaps I make in order to test the truth of a proposition presupposes the truth of the proposition that the apparatus I believe I see is really there and the like? Doesn't testing come to an end? The difficulty is to realize the groundlessness of our believing. At the foundation of well-founded belief lies belief that is not founded. Any reasonable person behaves like this. These foundational hinge propositions and the nest of other propositions they uphold form the framework of our understanding of the world. Furthermore, they guide the ways in which we act. Actions which reveal the certainty we have about these propositions. 
The real question underlying all of this is whether or not the hinge propositions at the base of our certainty are themselves grounded. In other words, can we have certainty about them? Wittgenstein proposes a qualified yes and no. On the one hand, he proposes our believing and subsequently our certitude is groundless. But on the other, action provides a basis for propositions of which we are certain. Yes, we have the hinge propositions and the nest of propositions upheld by those, but at its root, there is no ground, as it were, under the hinges. It is not a personal matter whether a judgment or proposition stands fast for me, its certainty is an integral part of the language games in which we participate. Consequently, Wittgenstein grants that the language games upon which this whole edifice of certainty rests do have a basis of sorts. It is not particular propositions and their particular evidence per se, but action. Action is the ground of our language games and thus our certainty. As Wittgenstein puts it, we could doubt every single one of these facts, but we could not doubt them all. Our not doubting them all is simply our manner of judging and therefore acting. Giving grounds, however, justifying the evidence comes to an end, but the end is not certain propositions as striking us as immediately true, i.e. it is not a kind of seeing on our part, is our acting which lies at the bottom of the language game. As if giving grounds did not come to an end sometime, but the end is not ungrounded presupposition, it is an ungrounded way of acting. Acting is what shows the certitude we have in the propositions we believe. Action is part and parcel of human language. It is part of the language game as a whole. Our actions give meaning to the words we use, to the certitude we have in using them, and what they mean, and their truth, according to Wittgenstein. But something is missing. Absolute certitude. Does Wittgenstein go far enough? Wittgenstein's ideas on certainty, while illuminating, need supplementation. For instance, how can hinge propositions truly work if they themselves have no ground? And does action really provide an adequate substantiation for certainty? While the idea of hinges upon which all our other propositional certainties rely does make sense, Merely basing the ground, as it were, of these hinged propositions on action belies the notion that there must be some absolute ground upon which these hinges rest. One might liken it to an uber hinge. But Wittgenstein doesn't get that far. He doesn't tell us, other than action, what this presupposed uber hinge could be, or if it's even there. But it is there. And it's being. Being is the ground for absolute certitude. If there is to be absolute certitude, there must be an absolute datum, one given in such a way that with respect to it, we need not, even cannot, ask whether things be other than they seem. Such a datum is given to us through the idea of being. The idea of being, then, provides the fulcrum upon which absolute certitude turns. If we supplement Wittgenstein's idea of hinge propositions with that of an uber hinge, or a fulcrum, based on being, then his ideas of certainty come better into focus and can more adequately be used as an explanation of how we come to certitude about the propositions that we have. Wittgenstein brings us a new and philosophically vibrant 
view of certainty and language and how they both fit together. But without being as the basis of it all, the whole edifice falls apart. Being is the ground from which everything is to be understood, is the ground from which we get absolute certitude. So Wittgenstein was close. He just needed a nudge to get over that line. Thank you for viewing my project. Here is a list of my sources.